Hey guys, I'm Shaf with Polygon Gaming, and today's chat's gonna be a little bit different, because as you guys know, we started a new series called Newbie Tuesday, and Jay Ennen, um, also known as Zerg Herd, he is giving a lot of feedback, really supplying the replays, and just doing a great job, really helping the channel out quite a bit. Thank you so much, man. So I wanted to give him some, um, some feedback to his feedback, because I, like, I'll, I'll show you guys the comment. But I really appreciate, you know, the beginning and the end where, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, um, like, kind of congratulatory. But a lot of the assumptions sandwiched in between there are things that either aren't true at all or only half-truths. And I feel like my job as an educator is not complete until I SMASH those ideas. So, you know, I'm a vicious motherfucker. Let's do it. The first thing he was explaining was how the rail, um, he was doing Railgans 3 Roach Opener, and the reason he likes it is the fact that he only has to spend 75 gas early instead of 100. And, you know, on the surface, that's a reasonable explanation. My issue is how this explanation interacts with other explanations and the game that is going to develop as a consequence of that. So it's not any individual statement that he's made here that I disagree with, and I want to be clear on that. It's actually how they combine and how they fit together because one of these statements or two of these statements might work well together, but all of them are kind of contradictory. So here's the first part. Railgan did this build in August of 2016. It's old. This is an old build. He brought it back again in February of 2017. That's still an old build. Like that's four months ago, man. That's an old meta. At your level, it doesn't really matter though. You're going to be able to get away with a lot of things, but I need you to understand that that's not how pros play, okay? There are players like Namshar, Nurchio, who do use roaches, but they understand some of the underlying concepts, and I want to get deeper into that in this video. This is also a blind opener. This build, really, it was designed when the meta um, that Terran was doing was opening with a very quick factory. It was typically like Reaper, Hellion, into blah, 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 blah. And that's actually starting to come back. Look at Innovations games. But there's still a lot of people doing 2 one one And that's what's happening in this game, especially at your level. Even though you're doing old builds, so are your opponents. And while, you know, of course, <laughs> Blizzard's patched out the things that made those builds good, uh, people still do them at your level. And that's important because you need to know how to deal with them. There's plenty of videos on this channel about dealing with 2 on one This, however, lulled you into a certain course of action because you have already opened roaches. You're not getting link speed. So if he doesn't do what you're expecting, which is the factory opener, you're already behind. And you have to know that when doing this build. Now, you were able to get economically into a better position. There was things you did wrong, things he did wrong. But let's just assuming perfect play, this won't work. Okay. And so you're basically flipping a coin. Did he open factory? Did he open um, two racks? I mean, you don't know until you get there. I don't like openers that are like this, which is why I said I didn't like it in that initial video, but I didn't want to look at it too closely because if you like this kind of build, people do do coin flips, whatever, man, that's your style and I'm going to respect you for that. But let's look at a couple of things. You may only spend 75 gas but you're getting your hatchery way later. Like your natural hatchery is way later than it would be with a hatchery first ling opener. Your third base is also later. Your fourth base is definitely later. And you're just, you've got way less map control. Lings with speed are so much faster than roaches without speed. And you're far more vulnerable to a drop style using this roach opener. You may spend less gas early, you're right but you also mine much less gas early and as a result you're gonna mine less minerals because you know you got that hatchery a little bit later it's 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 a little bit weird how that works out but notice in your own games compare your benchmarks or even railgan's benchmarks because he's executing the build perfectly but like look at how he's executing it and what his benchmarks are and then compare that to like a hatchery first opener so when's the natural go down when do uh you have two base saturation when does the third go down when does the fourth go down and you'll just notice that always with this kind of opener it's always going to be a little bit delayed in short your economy is weaker i have a series on this channel that talks about how decisions stack up and how every game is a balancing act with regard to the consequences of those decisions to be less abstract though your build takes a faster pull this hurts your economy with a slower hatchery assuming this build is executed perfectly you gain map control with those three roaches and you apply pressure to your opponent 
Behind this, you're able to drone up and thus negate any economic damage you took earlier. But you have to do damage to him in order to negate that. So you have to do damage while droning up behind. You've kind of thrown his build off. And what if you don't do the damage? You're already behind. So that's the coin flip. While all of this is occurring, you're naturally going to be doing the rule of one gas, which allows you to snowball your drone count. That's why you're able to get that economy behind it, because you just pulled off your, your gas as soon as you have the 75 boom done and your economy snowballs, which is good. You're Zerg. That, that's how this is supposed to be played out. Minerals in the early game do mean a better economy, but gas means a better defense, and you have to strike a balance between those two. I also asked in the last video why you didn't leave one drone on that extractor. You replied that you wanted to stay safe first the reaper at the natural until the queen pops. That's cool. I, I can respect that, but that's not really what my question is. My question is, why did you have the 17 out of 16 on minerals? Why wasn't that one guy in your gas? It doesn't mine at 95% efficiency. I have no idea what the math is on that, but it doesn't even matter to be honest with you, because it should have been in the gas. You'd have been safer. You wouldn't lose as much. Because while you may be able to produce more by mining more and maybe with the minerals, let's just assume the 95% of sufficiency, you're still not going to be able to defend it as well. You saw how badly that Reaper was about to you up. You only got by because he made a mistake. You can't rely on your opponent to make mistakes. That's the lesson of this video. I'm not sure who told you about the 95% efficiency, but I'd check those sources. I think it's far less efficient than that. I think it's maybe as low as 10%, but again, I'm not a math dude. I agree that, you know, it shouldn't have been gone to the natural, but that's all the more reason to leave it in the gas. You're safer when you mine gas and you have the worker to do it. As far as your fascination with no gas styles, I can see where you're coming from with the whole pigs rule of one gas but let's talk about this a little bit the rule of one gas is something that has come and gone over time spanishiwa's ice fisher build is the first time i became aware of it but it probably is older than that and he didn't take his first gas until around 44 supply he lowered it to 36 later but it was still pretty late you got yours earlier but then stopped using it that's a different tale in order to do that though spanishiwa made spine crawlers and he accepted a very defensive posture. You are doing two things that are polar opposites in this game. While you're trying to do the defensive thing once you've got those three roaches out, you did produce the three roaches. So on the one hand you're doing an aggressive opener, but then you're failing to grab gas behind it. And gas allows you to be more aggressive or have enough tactical options to mount a decent defense. Roaches versus Hellions are great. Or speedlings versus cyclones or you know anything else. But Bear in mind, Cyclone Hellion is a, or Hellbat sometimes, uh, is a very popular opener right now. And with this build, you're going to die every time to that build. You just don't have the ability to defend it. And it's going to depend on the amount of units you make, whether you're going to be mounting a decent defense or doing a more aggressive opener where you're actually putting on the pressure. But the rule of one gas, as suggested by Pig, is from an older meta and is used to power a Ling Baneling Muta push. Only Ling Bingling Muta pushes. Because roaches require gas earlier, by not getting the gas, you are begging your opponent to come kill you immediately. These ideas contradict one another. Even though you sent Lings, slow Lings, out on the map, you have far less tactical options with a slow Ling. Notice you did need Lings to stay alive? They weren't that effective though because they were slow. And you don't want slow Lings. Slow Lings tend to die. If a marine shoots a speedling, you can pull it away, zigzag it across your mini-map, and eventually send it right back to the same spot. The marine's not going to be there. Slowling, dead. Boom. Dead. Every time. And we got to get used to the whole larva thing. Because if you're going to be doing the rule of one gas, you need to be doing lings, and that means you're going to be starved for larva. Namshar is a great player when it comes to like seeing the blood in the water. There's also um, No Regret, who is also really good at that. So watch some of their gameplay and notice like how decisively they just go for either wall, like 
particular buildings in a wall, or if the wall is down, how they'll just park one of their units on top of it to stop it from being able to go back up. These guys are great at that. You can study them and just learn some of their t techniques and tactics. As far as focusing medevacs, it's actually written into Pig's Guide as well, and I'm going to put a link in the description so you can check out my two favorite versions of that guide, because he's been uh, nursing this idea for a while, and as he refines it, it becomes better and better. You're talking about doing your Blind Roach Hydra and how when you add Swarm Host that you think those three units together are good versus Mech or Bio. I could not disagree more. Bio tears Swarm Hosts apart. Your opponent just didn't drop you enough to take advantage of this. You gotta remember, your opponents aren't that good, just like you're not that good. And I'm not, like, both of you should learn. I Thank you for playing StarCraft. Like, it's a great thing. I'm not talking shit at all. But because you recognize your opponents are worse, the things that require the most multitasking, the most attention, the most AP, and the most focus are going to be the things that your opponents don't do. And right now, you're about to break into a threshold where your, some of your opponents can do those things. And boy, howdy, you're going to change your opinion on this. But don't take my word for it, man. As long as it's working for you, do it. All right? But when it stops working, come back and watch this video. Swarm hosts are awful against bio. Roaches too, unless you're making a handful to deal with mines or hellions, which have their own exceptions. Mines are great uh, to, to set off with roaches. Um, they just It's way better to use your roach to just take that shot than to use lings. Hellions, of course, wreck lings. Roaches give you a pivot point to kind of move the lings around, try to circle around the hellions as they're engaging the roaches, but it gives you a pivot point, a center of control. This really becomes a game of controlling territory. Like I said, the roaches, the hellions have to come in to attack that because the roaches are slowly pushing towards his base. Eventually, he's going to have to defend it. So what you want to do is circle your lings around it, and you're just controlling territory. It's all about controlling territory in this matchup. Factory units in general, like Widow Mines, Tanks, Thors, and, you know, Liberators, not technically a factory unit, but still, they're great at controlling territory. In a Bio-style, Marines typically guard tanks from air, while the tanks guard the Marines from the Ling Baneling. It's a mutual, co-beneficial relationship. The Terran slowly creeps forward, trying not to get caught with too much unseaged. During this period, you can counterattack with Lings to great effect. You just gotta send more Lings than his next wave of reinforcements could defeat. Terran will always control territory with factory units, and there's not much you can do about it. But mech is a 100% commitment to that principle. Compare the sieged tank to the mobility and splitting of a marine. A mech style doesn't have that mobility, and therefore roaches and swarm hosts are far more effective at forcing an entire army to unseige or die. It's a choice between unseaging most of your units and just fighting the best you can, or just dying outright. Maybe you can get some of your units away. Bio is much better at just escaping, keeping things alive, and eventually, you know, they can just run away from the swarm hosts. Literally, they can just run away from the swarm hosts, wait for the locusts to die, come back, and you have a third of your army. It's brutal in these leagues, man. Like, let's say you throw your locusts up, they force them to land, they pick up, and then they just fly into your main. Now you've got these slow locusts that are never going to make it all the way to your main. A good player can exploit this. Bio is much better handled by a Muta Ling Bane Ling strategy, which is why you always see it. But just calling something Muta Ling Bane is kind of a disservice, because even though the composition is always the same, the ratio and the relationships change your tactics, the way you play, how defensive versus how aggressive you are, everything has changed. But we'll get to that. And while, you know, you may be right, if he didn't have tanks shelling his own units, then you might have been okay because the tanks also wouldn't have shelled your roaches. Yeah, okay, maybe. But he'd spend those resources on other things. Liberators do pretty well, but in this case, he just needed Marine Marauder Mine Medivac. That's all it would have taken. The Medivacs pick up all the things we just talked about to, to get out of there when the Locusts come. The Mines... Well, they can pretty much stay there when the locusts come, unless the overseer come in, but typically the Terran snipes that before they lift. So, yeah, the mines are pretty much okay. He picks up the marines, marauders, runs away from the locusts, and then he just comes back and fights your army. There's not a lot you can do about it. And that's what a good player will do. 
In this next section, this is really the part that inspired this video, because you are misunderstanding fundamentally the role of some units. Mutalisks and swarm hosts are not equivalent exchanges. Swarm hosts are used to break a fortified position, as we talked about earlier. You can see the tanks parked, and you attack them and they kill each other, or they unseage and go away, and you've broken the position. So the whole idea is to either force the opponent to move or kill him for not moving. Mutalists can't do that. All the tanks have to do is have a few marines nearby. So these are not equivalent exchanges. Mutalists are typically used in two fashions in this matchup. Mass mutalisk styles and fast mutalisk styles. The fast ones are aiming to do damage, hitting before the enemy has turrets and is quickly transitioned out of. That seems to be what you're referencing when you say you get guaranteed damage with a swarm host instead of getting mutas for harass. Mutalisks are not typically a harassment unit. Surprise, surprise. That only applies to a fast mutalisk build, and even then, you're right, it's not guaranteed. That's why you don't see those builds that much. But a mass mutalisk build gets a strong economy off the roll of lings, banelings, and upgrades. And they have a good economy behind it while getting smaller numbers of mutalisks. These small numbers of mutalisks just knock dropships out of the sky. He's staying safe, he's expanding his economy, he's playing defensive. Whereas you're talking about harassment and being aggressive. See, these are two totally different ways of playing Zerg. And as a lower level player, you're tempted to be the more aggressive because it helps you hide your own mistakes. But StarCraft's a game of embracing your own mistakes. And that's gonna mean playing a defensive style until you learn how. And then maybe you can be like Namshar, maybe you can be like Guru or um, No Regret. Maybe you can do things like this. But until then, you need to understand the role of these units. Fast Mutalisks are aiming to do damage. They hit before the enemy has turrets and is quickly transitioned out of. A mass Mutalisk style, like the one espoused by Pig in his one gas rule demonstrations, are about starting defensive, using Mutalisks to swat away drops. But Mutalisks are always useful in battle. The goal is to seize an opportunity when the opponent is leapfrogging his tanks, unseaging one at a time. If he ever unseages more than a few, roll in there with your Ling Baneling army. This forces marines to get away from the tanks, which the mutalisks then swoop over and kill. You can afford to trade your Ling Baneling army, but you cannot afford to lose your mutalisks. Once you Widow mines are pretty much the only hope that money has of taking out this whole army here, but Sue just has way more to fly. So many mutalisks you're at between 40 and 60 mutalisks, everything melts because of the bouncing glaive. So the goal is to get to that huge number, which is why Pig does not recommend a newer player transition out of Ling Baneling Muta. You stay Ling Baneling Muta from start to finish. Well, you can't get the mutalisks at the start, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you again, Jay, for uh, visiting the channel for watching the videos for sharing them with your friends and for just sending in your replays man that helps a ton i want to get more content out there for you guys so as well as you know more feedback on the commentary we just had here as well as the clips that i'm going to include in the video itself you know if you have questions or anything like that definitely include them but let me know what subjects you want to hear about in the comments below i am shaft of polygon gaming guys i'll see you next time if you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.